is different. Okay. You'd have to yeah. 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 Right. Chris right. Smith, the chairman for IDC, until tomorrow, next day, it'll be over with, and we'll have other people stepping up. Um, can you hear me back there? Okay. I gotta yell. Greg Hudson, can you stand up real quick? Mark Drescher. These two guys have volunteered to step in as co-chairs next year to move on up. It sounds like Katina, Dick Keeley will be taking over and uh, mentoring these two to show them what's going on. But I want to thank them very much for volunteering to be part of the team. Okay, I'd like to introduce Lieutenant Governor Mappanel. He is the 17th Lieutenant Governor elected to the state of Oklahoma. He also serves as the President of the Oklahoma State Senate. He's in charge of the, he's the Secretary of the Tourism and Branding for Governor Stitt. You guys welcome. I'll try to use this. Yeah, the speakers are here, so. Can you hear me okay like this, or do you want this? Microphone. Microphone? Okay, you can't hear the microphone. All right. Uh, well, thank you guys uh, for letting me come out and, and uh, speak to some job creators in the state, um, the industry that, that uh, helps drive all the national prosperity that we have in this country. Uh, a lot of people forget that, uh, and I want you to know that I don't. Uh, I, I can probably speak for Governor Stitt as well. Uh, that uh, we will continue to have your back, but at the same time, we want you all to yell at us when we need to be yelled at. Come to us when you see things coming down the tracks that we may not see as politicians. We need this kind of communication, and I'm gonna, we'll, we'll certainly speak to a little bit of that. Uh, but Kirby, before you leave, uh, Kirby Smith, my chief of staff, Wave Kirby, uh, and please get to know her. I stole her away from Frank Lucas's office uh, this past year. Uh, so Kirby is my chief of staff in my office. We have a very small office, okay? The, the waste, fraud, and abuse inside of state government is not inside the lieutenant governor office. <laughs> I have three people on staff total. Uh, and so you can get to me really quickly, uh, and you can get to my chief of staff really quickly as well uh, if there is silliness going on at the state capitol. I can't help you nationally. We can talk about that, uh, but I, I don't have as much influence, uh, unfortunately, at, at the state level, at the national level. Uh, but, but I do want you to hear from me. Well, I mean, one of the biggest reasons that I ran for lieutenant governor, I'm two years on the job. Year one was, was uh, historic flooding in the state of Oklahoma. Year two, global pandemic. I have no idea what this year holds for us. But I am claiming that this will be the year of prosperity for the state of Oklahoma. Can I get an amen? Amen. Uh, I, I want that. I believe that we're positioning ourselves, I hope, to, to be able to do that because we're nimble. We're extremely aggressive going around this uh, state and around the country, trying to lure businesses here. But the priority really starts with you all, those of you all that started businesses here, growing businesses here. Uh, you all have chosen to raise your families here, do business here. We want to help you first. We'll hire one more person, two more people. Uh, that, that, that's, gonna how, that's, gonna, that's how we're going to grow this state the right way. And I want you to know that the communities around the state that are, are doing it that way are growing by leaps and bounds. And, and so we know that. Uh, but we're not going to be a top 10 state. Okay, I want to be a top 10 state. I want to be on top 10 good lists, not bad lists. I know that's, again, that was a, a, a talking point from Governor Stitt, but it's more than a talking point. He, he wants to believe it. He wants that to, to be real in Oklahoma. Well, to do that, we got to create more private sector jobs in the state of Oklahoma, period. Period. Uh, and I remind our legislators of that all the time. That, you know, listen, if we're not helping your industry, for goodness sakes, hire more people, high paying jobs, what do your people do? What do you do? You buy a house. If you buy a house, you're paying property taxes. Okay? You, you pay property taxes, you're doing what? You're supporting local public schools. That's how commerce works. But if we're not creating jobs in the state, then it's very difficult to keep up with states around us. And, and I start off every speech usually by just, where are we as a state? That state to the south of us, I don't say the name of the state, but it's down there and I know you probably <laughs> do a lot of business down there, okay? They beat their chest a lot for a lot of different reasons. One of the reasons is they got 28 million people down there. 28 million people in that state. We got less than four million. 
when the census report comes out, we've been going around literally knocking on doors, the Department of Commerce has, trying to get every single person in the state signed up because we lose federal dollars and millions and millions of federal dollars if we don't get every single person registered in the state. We did a really, really good job. Okay, but the report's gonna come out and it's gonna say 3.9 million. So we're gonna have less, we're gonna show less than 4 million people in the state. We're not gonna pick up an additional congressional seat. A lot of people forget that we used to have, you know, six congressional seats, not five. Texas is picking up three congressional seats. So, again, I don't want 28 million people in Oklahoma, don't you? but I'll take 5 million. I mean, a million more people in the state, that's a total game changer. Total game changer. I mean, let's go to, let's just get over 4 million threshold, go to 4.1, 4.2, 4.3. That doesn't happen without your industry. I'm well aware of that. I know I'm preaching to the choir a little bit on that. Yes, I want to get more diversified as an economy, too, sure. And you should want that, too, because when we're not diversified and the state of Oklahoma runs out of money, unfortunately, we just come to you for a check. <laughs> well, we can't do that anymore. Uh, that, that's the game that we've played in Oklahoma for far too long. Well, don't have any money to operate state government, so let's just go to the oil and gas industry that we live or die on in the state of Oklahoma. So I, I, I think a more diversified economy helps everybody out, including the oil and gas industry, so that we're not just pointing our finger and, 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 and you all, all the time. Stint knows that, I know that. Again, you got a revolving door down at that state capitol right now because of term limits. So it is critically important that industries like this, associations like this, make yourself personally known to, for sure, your state rep and state senator, your own state rep and state senator. But I'm, man, it is, it's, it is a constant uh, chain of command down there from a leadership level all the way down. I mean, I'm meeting new folks. Uh, and if I'm meeting new folks, that, that certainly means that you all are, are meeting new individuals. So stay on top of this. I mean, you guys do it the right way. You're aggressive in that way. But you go down to the Capitol, not just one day a session, not just one day, but invite them to events like this. Take them to coffee, because if you get them at the state capitol, they're drinking water out of a fire hose. I mean, it's mo much more effective. Again, you still have some time before the first Tuesday in February, before they are at the capitol every day, listening to a lot of people coming into their office, telling them why they need more money, and all the ROI that they create. It, between now and the first Tuesday in February is where you can do a lot of uh, good work. Uh, reaching out to, yes, the leadership, but those state reps and those state senators. So uh, I would make sure that, that um, you do that between now and, and the first Tuesday in February. And again, my door is always open to you. Again, introduce you to our chief of staff. Uh, I want to be helpful in any way that I can because in my role as lieutenant governor, I am the sales and marketing director for the state. I mean, that was the other real big reason that I ran uh, for lieutenant governor. My background is sales. I know a lot of people in this room, at the end of the day, it's sales. I mean, it just is. At the end of the day, it's about selling. Okay, Texas has all, I'm sorry, I said the name, I said the name, but that state now. <laughs> they have all the same problems that we have. They have just as much silly legislation as any other state, but they do a really good job of bragging about themselves too. And, and, and it was very frustrating to me that I did not see Oklahoma bragging about some of the good things that we actually do do in the state of Oklahoma. We have 12 different ecosystems. We have 30, 39 sovereign nations inside of one state, extremely diverse in our people and our landscape, amazing work, work ethic, one of the best career tech systems in the entire country, okay? Any site relocation firm will tell you the two best career tech systems in the country are Georgia and Oklahoma. Well, why the heck are we not talking about that? I mean, going down and getting a certificate at a career tech center in one year and making eighty dollars to $100,000 a year, Instead of, to send everybody, instead of sending everyone to college. We still need a whole lot of college graduates, don't get me wrong. But we haven't been talking about a career tech system for far too long. So let's talk about that too. So those are things that, again, I, I believe we need to be talking more about. No state can match the heritage and the history of this state. And so that's why I'm so passionate about the tourism opportunity. And, and it's a real opportunity for us to really turn that into economic development. Uh, and I'll, I'll get to that in, in a second, but, but nationally, I, I do certainly want to, to talk a little bit about this. Um, uh, be, because really my message, one of my messages to you again, I, I've, I've kind of grown up, 
again, in a sales and marketing, public relations, advertising world. And politics really moves downstream, you know, it, it, let me make sure I get this quote right. Politics is downstream from culture. If you remember nothing else from me talking, politics is downstream from culture, meaning what? The culture in this country is against this industry. I mean, year after year after year, you're getting beat up by the culture that has been created in this country. And politics is downstream from that. So again, this, this if, if I had a bunch of politicians standing up there, they're not gonna, they probably wouldn't be happy with what I'm about to next, what I'm gonna say next. You should still, yes, be involved politically. Helping politicians with a check is, the, I know you're all backed into a corner by every politician in the state. But you, your industry needs to get more involved financially in this cultural war that is going on in this country. I got four kids. One of them's gonna be 15 in two weeks. I, I didn't see as much of this. I mean, I've been in politics, been involved in politics for a very long time. But I'm now seeing it through the eyes of my 15-year-old daughter who is on that phone every single day and what is she's getting fed through social media, through the movies that she's watching. And again, I mean, thankfully, we're sitting around a dinner table with her every night telling her the things that she may be learning through her phone or in school, okay, from her other friends. And again, I see some heads nodding. You all get this. But your industry needs to get involved more so when it comes to this culture fight. So what do I mean by that? If we don't like what movies are projecting and portraying about our industry, and I say our industry because I'm going to beat my chest with you all, then it's time to make movies. It's time to get in the movie making business. It's time to go make some documentaries. Again, I, I saw a few uh, document. I mean, we're starting, the, you're starting to see some more pro oil and gas uh, uh, documentaries. Far few movies, in my opinion. And it's gonna take a while to compete in that environment. But it's time, I mean, listen, no better time than to start right now. Let's not just complain about this, let's get involved. If we don't like the podcasts out there, if we don't like the books that, that, that again, our kids are reading in middle schools and high schools, then let's write some books and let's start creating a podcast, which is very easy to do. I mean, so when you all leave this room, I, I didn't want to just stand up in front of me and say I'm just one more politician in a suit coming up here and saying how important your, your industry is. Okay, I can do that all day long too. But what I'm telling you is, yes, have personal relationships with your politicians, but figure out ways that you can get involved in this cultural fight. And it is a fight. Uh, and I don't know where we go from here federally. Okay, I, you know, certainly there was a, a very big debate between Donald Trump and Joe Biden when it came to the oil and gas industry. He, yes, Joe Biden has said he wants to pivot away. He wants to move away from oil and gas. Not a big fan of fracking. He can say he, again, doesn't, <laughs> he, he can try to backtrack on that. We'll see. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give him a chance, okay? I'll give him a chance, but he's gonna have to prove that he actually will support this industry. We'll see, okay, we'll see about that. But I know from talking to, again, federal elected officials um, and, and those in the state, again, we got to fight ahead of ourselves. And you all have been fighting it for decades. But what I'm seeing in this country today, again, I, I grew up in politics. I started volunteering on political campaigns in college. Uh, I was the youngest state chairman of the Republican Party in the country for a couple years. And then I went on to go run the Republican National Committee with Rights Priest. So that's kind of my background. A little bit. So before I was lieutenant governor, I was in all 50 states, helping state parties, uh, win back the Senate in 2014, and then electing a president in 2016. No, I had no idea that Donald Trump was going to run for president, but he did. Okay, and he got elected in 2016. So that's the train, you know, that's the roller coaster that I've been on. And so I've been in every single one of these states, and I've seen the different fights that, that we have really have been engaged in. And in today's world, and I, I told uh, the Senate caucus this. I see much more, and, and again, I see this through the eyes of my 15-year-old daughter now. It's a fight between socialism and capitalism today, more so than, again, Republican, Democrat. We're, we're going to bat, battle it out for ideas and put, put our ideas out in the marketplace. But socialism versus capitalism today, you look at polling among these newer generations, these younger generations when it comes to do you believe in capitalism or socialism? It's shocking. Shocking. Because yes, again, things they're learning, but a lot of it through phones, a lot of it in schools. 
So again, how do we combat that? Again, you're going to have to pull out your pocketbooks on some of this stuff and work with the private sector, work with public relations advertising firms to make sure that we are getting our message of clean, reliable energy, affordable energy, that all the byproducts that the oil and gas industry provides, lowering emission rates by 37% since 2007 because of natural gases. We hear that in rooms like this, but my 15-year-old daughter's not hearing that message. You know, I, I follow on Twitter, if you haven't been kicked off Twitter, uh, and you're still on Twitter, <laughs> Frack Feed, okay? Frack Feed. It's a great, it's a great uh, uh, Twitter account that talks about all of these things in a real fun, humorous way, which again, I, I think really uh, is, is going to be a, a, a strategy that we're going to need to use with the next generation. But it has like less than 1,000 followers. I mean, they need 50,000 followers. So again, whoever's running that account, they're putting out the right information, but how are we going to, again, get that into the hands of, the, of, of newer generations? Those are the things that I think about, along with gross production tax and, and all of these other battles that, again, we've got to fight at a state level and at a federal level. But I want you to know I'm, I'm very passionate about uh, the messaging of this. And the way technology works in 2021, folks, we can reach them. It's actually not that expensive to reach them with micro-targeting and the, and the things that we can do. I mean, that, that again, that, that's how I've grown up. Um, and so I, I just, I want you to hear a little of that uh, of from me. And if you want to have that conversation into the future, and I hope some of you, you know, maybe, maybe someone here that's, that uh, says, hey, you know what, you're right, we need to get more involved, let's talk. Because I can connect you with a whole lot of people uh, that may be able to help with that. And again, start it here. Start it in the state of Oklahoma, because with term limits, you're going to have a whole lot of new members. You got a lot of members down there at the state capitol. Some of the things that they're saying right now, I never thought. <laughs> I never thought that I would hear from a, and a politician from the state of Oklahoma. But you're hearing it, and there was never, there's never been a better day than again to start now. And again, it's more than just educating. Yes, we got to get into high schools. We got to get into middle schools. Middle schools. Uh, with this message about how important this industry is and all the ways that we know that it is important. So again, that, that's going on, that, that's what's going on uh, federally. As far as my swim lanes at the state level, when it comes to tourism and branding, I, I told you, again, I, I just don't think we did a great job of bragging on our state. We, we put Oklahoma is okay on our license plate for far too long. <laughs> And that's been, you know, that's what we were beating our chest about. Oklahoma is okay. Uh, it was just, it was on that license plate for far too long. It kind of became the brand in Oklahoma. Kind of, frankly, became a running joke. And then we let everything else, frankly, in the state deteriorate. You know, you crossed over an invisible line in Oklahoma. You had a halfway falling over welcome to Oklahoma sign. <laughs> right? And I'm from northeast Oklahoma. And so it was always real, you know, ironic when you, you, you came in. And I saw this sign for the last 20 years as I crossed back over from Arkansas into Oklahoma. Halfway falling over sign that was all faded, and then underneath it it said, Discover the Excellence. <laughs> while, while we're rolling around the state with an Oklahoma is okay license plate. Well, what do you think our taxpayers and the citizens in Oklahoma are going to think about the state? That politicians don't, don't want to invest in our own state. What do you think our kids think about that? Well, I mean, I, listen, clearly Oklahoma doesn't care about me. Again, we don't, we don't demand excellence in this state, and we're okay with mediocrity. So I wish that I didn't have to be the one that came in and said, hey, I actually care about public restrooms and fixing our toilets and our welcome centers. And I'm not joking. I went around to all of our welcome centers in the crossroads of America. Okay, This isn't Maine. Okay, We have millions and millions of people that are beating up our roads every single day. And they come through Oklahoma, right? And they do two things. They, they take a gas and they go to the bathroom in our welcome centers. And what are we showing them? Well, I can tell you, because I've visited all the welcome centers, probably the first politician that's done that in a very long time. Okay? And it was a disgrace. Good people that work there. Yeah, great people that work there. But it was a disgrace. I mean, I, I sat there for an hour and watched people come into that welcome center, turn around and leave without using those bathroom facilities. And what do you think? You think they're going to get off the road, 30 minutes down the road, to spend money at a restaurant? Or, or any of our tourism attractions? No way, no way, because they because they left. Uh, they well, if this is if this is all I'm getting at a welcome center. 
again, a welcome center, welcoming people to the state, then I'm out of here and I'm never coming back to Oklahoma. So we are right currently, if you go to any of our welcome centers within the next two weeks, every one of our welcome centers is, is been completely renovated with touch, touchless bathroom facilities. Now, yes, because of COVID, we've been able to do this. If you want to stop an infectious disease, you might want to start with the public restrooms in the middle of the country. Uh, you know, that was, that was my pitch. <laughs> well, we have brand new, we have, and it worked. Okay? <laughs> so with brand new signage, again, it just looks good. If you, if you, and we put in, we put up brand new "Welcome to Oklahoma" the metal signs. Okay, we put up brand new metal signs about a good year ago. So if you come into the state, again, a lot of you all travel. You go down again. You cross those invisible lines a lot. You see these new, fresh, vibrant signs. I think those things matter. Because before, I saw people taking selfies in front of the Welcome to Arkansas sign, you know, and literally across the highways, the Welcome to Oklahoma sign that no one was stopping and getting a selfie in front of. In this kind of world, okay, social media driven world, do those things matter? I think they do. I think they do. Uh, so we are, we are getting better when it comes to branding and talking about how diverse we are, that you can come to Oklahoma and make a difference day one. Generations want to hear that. The quality of life. This is not 1980 Oklahoma City. Okay, when when we when Oklahoma City tried to lure uh, the airline uh, uh, Continental, I believe, or United, excuse me, in 1980. Remember, if you if you haven't read Nick Cornett's book, read. It. It's really good. When when they quietly sent their employees to Oklahoma City in 1980, right, to to check it out, and they went back to their headquarters and they said, "What? There's no way in hell I'm moving to Oklahoma City." Excuse my French, but that's what they said. It actually probably was worse than that. There's no way I'm relocating to Oklahoma City. Now, I can guarantee you, I bet my house on it, if we did that today, people would say, imagine that. I had no idea that Oklahoma City was this good. We can, Oklahoma City can compete with anybody. Tulsa can compete with anybody. we got 77 counties. We, many counties can compete in that way now. Thankful, thankfully, again, because of leaders that have stepped up at a local level, say enough's enough. And we're not going to be able to compete with other uh, with other cities, with other states. We're not going to be able to keep your employees happy. And so we've stepped up in that way. But the other area that I want to talk to you about is our tourism industry. It's the front door to all of that economic development. As I said, no state can match our heritage and our history. 200 man-made lakes. You got Route 66, you got the Chisholm Trail, you got this pioneering spirit, 39 sovereign nations. Yes, a lot of people come to Oklahoma to see that Native American. You got the number one new attraction in America in, in, uh, in Tulsa, the gathering place. You got just a host of, of tourism attractions in, in the Oklahoma City area now. They com again, it competes with really any other large city. But we weren't talking about those things. But when we do, when we get people to Oklahoma to spend sales tax dollars that are critically important to funding a city, because we're the most sales tax dependent state in the country, it's a whole other speech, but we are. If we can get people here to spend those dollars and they fall in love with this place, they do. We sell really well when we can get people here. And, and one of the easiest ways for us to get people here right now, particularly during COVID, is right there. And right there, no, that's Colorado, no, 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 no. But, you know, all of the great American road trip, you can social distance here, right? Come see America. I mean, that's been my mind since day one. If you want to see America, you got to see Oklahoma. If you want to see America, you got to see Oklahoma. It's past, it's present, what it's going to be, that's Oklahoma. And we had 2 million more people visit our state park system last year because of it. Now, some of that was due to that state down there. Uh, they closed their state parks. Okay? <laughs> so we had a whole lot of those people coming up. But that's, that's the best kind of money. People in Texas coming up here spending money and going home, I'll take that every day. <laughs> Two million more people visit our state park system. That's why we're investing $50 million this year and next year into our state park system to make it top 10, because right now it's not. All of our lodges getting upgraded, over 100 new bathroom facilities, new trail systems, all of that is going into our state park systems. Because again, employees demand those type of, uh, those type of uh, opportunities now, more so than they ever have been before. Those are just not things that unfortunately, again, won't, won't ask politicians why we didn't, but we let those things not be priorities for far too long. 
And on the value proposition list now for companies looking to relocate or grow, you got to do those things. You've got to do those things. The Oklahoma fishing trail. One other, certainly one of the um, one of the big wins for us. You know, when I was running for lieutenant governor, I talked about creating an Oklahoma fishing trail because I would travel down the turnpike and I saw the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail in Alabama, right on those billboards. I'm not going to Alabama to go golfing, but I will fish in Oklahoma. <laughs> The most diverse fishing in the country. I know we don't have an ocean, but we got paddlefish down to trout. There's only two states you can do paddlefish. We got amazing snagging paddlefish or down to trout. We got it all. Some of the best bass fishing, crappie fishing. Again, you all know this, but we weren't talking about it. So we created this Oklahoma fishing trail. It was a small idea. Okay, we invested some money into it. Okay, we started, you see the billboards that we have. ODOT right now is putting up signs connected to directional signage to 200 man-made lakes across the state of Oklahoma. So we created these different loops. And if you catch five different species of fish, we'll mail you a Grand Slam of Oklahoma fishing sticker to put on your tackle box or your Yeti cup. Okay, it costs us nothing. I mean, this costs us nothing. I can tell you today, if we're getting a 160 to one ROI on the Oklahoma fishing trail. We've over $45 million has been uh, created inside the state of Oklahoma. Again, that's hotel, lodging, restaurants, and a whole lot of alcohol. Okay, I'm unapologetic about that too. Okay, <laughs> we are targeting again, yes, uh, group trips, males and females across the state. But again, a regional footprint. We know people want to go fishing. Well, let's tell them about why to do it here and not Arkansas, not Colorado, not New Mexico. It's just as good right here. But you got to invite people. And you got to spend marketing dollars on it. And when you do it, again, it turns into revenue for the state of Oklahoma. A whole lot of it, by the way. So we will continue to promote that. We're going to uh, relaunch our Oklahoma Music Trail uh, this year. Uh, the number one music trail in the country is in Tennessee, and they're talking about all of our people. I mean, how ironic is that? I mean, it, it's all in Tennessee, but it's all our people. So why do we not have something for a guy named Garth Brooks in Oklahoma? Number one recording artist of all time. We know it. And there are people that will come to Oklahoma to see it, take a picture in front of it, and then go across the street and spend money at a restaurant. That those are the things that I'm focused on. Uh, and, and again, I'm blessed to be able to, again, talk the things that I talked about two years ago when I was campaigning, I actually now have full authority over it. And I give Stitt credit for that. Because Stitt said, hey man, you're on fire for this tourism thing, go after it. <laughs> go run the whole agency. And so now I'm in charge of, of how they spend their money. And believe me, they're spending their money today differently than they were before. And it's going to turn into, again, a whole lot more economic opportunities uh, for Oklahomans. There's over 100,000 people in the state of Oklahoma that, that uh, make a living off our tourism industry. Third largest industry in our state. Third largest industry in our state. So those are things that we're going to continue to be focused on. Because if I, if, if I focus my attention somewhere else, go down a rabbit trail somewhere where I don't have authority, I'm losing time, guys. And guys, I'm losing my time. I got two more years left in this term. And I want you to know I'm going to focus it on continuing to brand the state the way that it needs to be branded, to compete with other states, and really light a fire under this tourism industry that I believe can be a billion dollar industry for Oklahoma. Right now, it's about $750 million we generate state and local tax. Okay, state and local tax off our tourism. There's no reason we should not be a billion dollar state. Absolutely no reason. Uh, with the international tourists that we have coming in on Route 66 right now, too, I could, I could speak for an hour on that as well. The other centennial for Route 66 coming in four and a half years. So this is a real, real opportunity for us uh, over the next four to six years to take advantage of one of our greatest strengths, uh, and that is our tourism industry. Um, so with that, I'm going to open it up for some questions. I don't even know what time it is because my watch stopped. What time is it? Yeah, 12.24. 12.24? Okay, so we got a lot of time. Uh, I want to open it up for some questions, but I, I, I do, again, want to say I'm well aware that the greatest strength that we have is our oil and gas industry. Um, so, again, I, I mean this. If there's things that we can do, uh, you know, the other real big uh, area that I work in is over at the Department of Commerce. Uh, Sean Copeland, Brent Kissling is the executive director of the, the Department of Commerce. Now, that, that's a... Again, a good, a good thing. If you don't know who Brent Kisling is, you need to know who Brent Kisling is. You need to go meet with Brent Kisling. He's the executive director of the, of the, the Department of, of Commerce. He operates the Department of Commerce every day. 
Uh, when he ran Economic Development uh, Authority in Enid, used to work for Senator Inhofe uh, back in the day, uh, big supporter of, of uh, you all, uh, but you need to develop a relationship with him because I think he's going to be there a while. Sean Copeland is the secretary over there, he's a banker from the Tulsa area. Uh, those secretaries come in, they leave, okay? And I'd say that if Sean was standing right here. <laughs> I love Sean, but he doesn't run the day-to-day of the Department of Commerce. You need to know what the Department of Commerce is, is, is doing right now. What states are we going after? How are we helping your industry? We also have regional reps with the Department of Commerce. So wherever you live, okay, uh, there, you have a regional representative that works at the Department of Commerce. If you don't know who that person is, we will introduce you to that person. Every single company that I go talk to, I ask them. I just play dumb. Hey, so this is all great and good. I'm glad you're building. Do you know who your, your regional rep is for the Department of Commerce? And if they say no, then I got a phone call I'm making, I assure you, about 15 minutes later. Because we, we're, I don't believe that the state has been proactive enough, again, reaching out to companies. And again, you all should be at the top of that list. So if you're saying no to both of those we can get you that list. Probably that would probably be the best way to do it. I can just get you that directory um, of Brent along with his regional reps because they're really good. And if you got a problem, they may be able to help. Uh, and, and I would start there. Uh, we're, we're doing things a lot different at the Department of Commerce as well. Questions? Overall. Yeah. Uh, what I very want you to mention newly when you talk about the issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, I, I, every now and then, I hear people talk about bringing the national finals rodeo back to Oklahoma. Uh, you know, I know, I know it's a lot more complicated than that. But now we have convention center and all this other stuff. I, I mean, I'd be, I'd be all in for that. It makes more sense. And then my second question is, any, any chance to get a lucky point or two? <laughs> you, you don't know how many times I get asked that question. So, and again, I'm Mr. Public Beth Bathrooms, right? So, uh, I took a selfie in front of the, I mean, I mean, it's on my Facebook page, which Kirby got extremely uh, uh, terrified that I would post that photo. I have a question. Yeah, well, hold on. Oh, go, on go into that first point, because this, this, that is really, really important. Oklahoma City was already on the rise, okay? Modern city, modern frontier. But that convention center is a game changer. Mm -hmm. The convention center that is opening within the next few weeks is a game changer. There's only two cities in America that were investing in brand new convention centers. Convention business at some point will be coming back. We can get the biggest conventions in the world now with that new convention center. You know, everybody says Las Vegas and they think slot machines. Vegas operates on convention business. They have the world's largest convention center. Uh, in Las Vegas. That's, I mean, yeah, then they go spend all their money on slots, but again, it's the convention business uh, is their lifeblood. Oklahoma City, the sales tax that we can create, uh, we already have, they already have a number of, um, of conventions booked, and I think, again, the sky's the limit. Uh, national rodeos, national conventions, Republican, Democrat conventions, I mean, those are the largest political conventions you have in the country. We can go after those now. We couldn't before. Um, and, and so I, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because I'm very big and bold on that. Um, and how they've done it down there. Again, the walkability now of downtown Oklahoma City right there, I'm telling you, uh, 10 years from now, no telling what, uh, what Oklahoma City will be uh, because of that convention center. So I think that was a good investment. There's some other MAPS projects that, that, that I wasn't as big on, <laughs> but that one, Sign me up, uh, because that's going to turn into, again, a, a, a very large economic benefit uh, for the city and, and definitely for the state. Yeah. Yes? Maybe, uh, and I know it would take too much time here, but maybe you could put together a list. For those that don't know, the government agencies, pieces of you know our local and state governments that are, A, helping to promote oil and gas, as well as those who we all probably, you know, because there's a lot of people that don't know, like you say, the Department of Commerce. Well, what does the Department of Commerce have to do with oil and gas in Oklahoma? You know, maybe there could be a, you know, maybe you can put it out on your website, like, hey guys, if you're in oil and gas in Oklahoma, here's the people you probably ought to go talk to. Here's what they do for you and your industry. Yeah, that, no doubt about it. We, we can do that. I mean, even the Department of Transportation. Yeah. You know, I mean, Tim, yeah, 
Tim, Tim, I work more with Tim Gass than probably any other state employee. Try to get these guys to get their rigs moved across Bingo. the state. Those permits, sometimes Bingo. those are tough. That's right. I, I need better roads and infrastructure in the state of Oklahoma. Again, can I get an amen? We, we, we have to have that. Uh, and that's an investment, but we also need better directional signage and all those things that we need from a tourism perspective. So I work with him on a daily basis. Tim would be a great guy. Because uh, it comes up. When I'm talking to your industry and I'm, I, I do a plant tour somewhere, Man, this comes up all the time. Uh, but Ken Wagner, I mean, if, if you don't know Ken Wagner, uh, worked for Scott Pruitt at the EPA. He's now our new environment um, uh, secretary. Great guy. If you don't know him, obviously, he's right in the middle of your industry. Uh, and someone that uh, you absolutely should probably, uh, well, he should speak here, first off. Yeah. Uh, and I can make sure I can get you all of his information. Yeah. But it, no, it's a, it's a great idea. I'll, I'll, I'll get you kind of a one-pager. With, with some folks that you guys can be reaching out to. Yeah. What else? I appreciate your vision for Oklahoma. I appreciate you focusing on the first point where they come across and how embarrassing yeah. that was. Yeah. Well, it, it is. Uh, it's as good as any state now, or it will be. Uh, we're we're really we're getting there. Um, that could be our new license plate. As good as. <laughs> <laughs> Not just okay, guys. We're just as good. It's funny you bring up license plates because you know we took off Oklahoma is okay. Um, now we have a Twitter bird on our license plate. At least that's what it looks like. I know it's the scissor tail flycatcher that I don't think says much of anything about the state of Oklahoma. I know it's our state bird, but we're getting that off our license plate. Uh, we're passing legislation this session, most likely this session. Uh, usually every five years you get a new license plate and so that's going to be off your license plate now what's going to be on there I don't know yet. pump jack uh, oil rig, drum yeah, rig. Oil rig. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going to go on there yet okay but we have 300 specialty plates that you can buy right now I bet you can buy one with an oil rig on there I'm pretty sure you probably can um, I don't know what's going to go on there but it's going to be better uh, and uh, uh, hopefully next year uh, that license plate. That was something again that I, I made a pledge was was going to happen, and, and it is. It, it's going to happen. Yeah. Jefferson made a comment that we need to be up in the top ten, and we're not there yet. And then you made a comment about being in top ten. Who is our next state that we need to overcome? <laughs> so you know the, the Department of <laughs> Commerce, and again this was pretty fascinating. And again, I, Copeland would be a great speaker. They identified. They went out and identified five anti-business states that we are right currently having marketing. <clears throat> campaign into those five states. Now we could have picked 15 states, 20 states. Um, there's Washington State was, was one of them. Um, regionally though, Colorado's the state um, that, that um, we continue to, to go after. Um, I continue to say though, and, and this is reinforced by people down there, again, 28 million people, okay? So that, that's folks in Dallas and Houston taking them an hour and a half, two hours to get to work. Okay, every morning. It's a whole lot of Oklahomans that move there for a job, okay, after landman school, okay, like my buddies, that would love to come home. So we don't really have a boomerang program. A lot of states have uh, very aggressive boomerang programs to where if you're an Oklahoman, you graduate, you leave the state, and you never come home, well, are we communicating with you in any way? I mean, are, we, are we mailing you something? Are we, I mean, a lot of states are really aggressive on that, and I think we should be. So Sean and I, I've told the Department of Commerce, you got to put a plan together for this, uh, because you know there's there's the largest you know OU alumni association is in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Okay, we should, none of us should be surprised by that. Are we talking to them? I mean, they still love Oklahoma. They still got a lot of pride in Oklahoma, and they may be in the middle of a job. And can the Department of Commerce connect that person? that loves OU, that goes to the bar in Dallas for every OU game, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a hell of a lot easier sell than trying to go to Washington State and say, hey, have you ever been to Oklahoma? Let me show you Oklahoma. Now, there are people that want to leave Washington State. They want to leave Seattle. They want to live mini that leave Minneapolis, New York, LA. Don't get me wrong. There's some people out there saying enough's enough. Okay, you know where I'm going with that. People are saying, I'm, I'm tired of boarding up my businesses, my, my business on Main Street here. I want out of here. We're going after those people too. But I continue to kind of reinforce to the Department of Commerce, there's a lot of good Oklahomans, and Texans for that matter. Yes, I said, and Texans, that would like to get out of that state. Uh, and I think we need to have a specific plan 
uh, for, for them and for that state. Um, so yes, the Department of Commerce has uh, a, a plan specific on the anti-business side um, and will continue to, but we need to make sure that just, just for a regional footprint, it's pretty easy to go to Little Rock. You know, it's easy to go to Kansas City, St. Louis, so you know, four or five hours away and get them here um, and move in their 15 to 20 employees. So we're, we're, we're heavily involved in that too. It's been frustrating because we haven't been able to get on a lot of airplanes you know, in the last year uh, and go to some of those states and have face-to-face -face meetings with some of those uh, businesses. But I can tell you, we have a hundred, there's 150 companies right now, 150 companies that we are having conversations with, various levels of seriousness. A lot of those companies, by the way, are not uh, from America. They're, they're looking to reshore operations to some state or they're looking to set up a, se a second office. You know, I mean, I, I had three calls last week, London, uh, Scotland, um, uh, and uh, Czech Republic. Three different conversations with three different companies that were looking to reshore op uh, operations to some state, they're looking at Oklahoma. Um, so there's a lot of that going on right now. Some of it due to COVID, um, uh, some of it, hey, they wanna get into the American market and they're looking for a, a, a open, business-friendly state. Uh, where they can, yes, sometimes get cheap utility rates and some, some decent land value. Uh, and we're open to having those conversations with them. Yeah, but 150. Right, we won't close all 150, but 150. Yeah. And when Elon opens another factory, okay, <laughs> I know you're thinking it. When Elon opens another company, we're going to be on that list again. You know, we lost to Austin. Austin came in second place to Nevada for that first, okay? They had all the relationships. They were primed and ready to go. He, Elon was legitimately blown away by what Tulsa offered. Had no idea, again, the quality of life, uh, what they could do in the Tulsa market. His own statue. His own statue. <laughs> yeah, his own statue. Which did you, get, did you get up there and paint that? I, I didn't. Uh, I did the whole car. We did a Route 66 parade for him, though, uh, that I led. Hey, whatever it takes. And I want you to hear that. Whatever it takes. It, you know, again, we, I don't have an ego about these things. Again, I'm fixing public restrooms in Oklahoma, okay? I have no ego. <laughs> whatever it takes to go tell the world how great your place this is. This is a great place. I think it's the best state to raise a family, work, and play. But there's a lot of other there's a, a lot of countries and a lot of other states that don't believe that. They still think this is the Dust Bowl. That's not the case at all. But if we're not preaching it, if we're not out there beating our chest, then they're going to continue to think it. If we don't define who we are, 49 other states will define it for us. This is Politics 101. Anybody else? All right. Thank you all so much. I look forward to talking more. <laughs>